Yesterday, this was our little cyberpunk mystery. In six days, it'll be all of Cardano saying, ladies and gentlemen, we're live. It'll be a truly momentous occasion that we've all been waiting for for a long time, but we all probably also need to be ready for a historic amount of criticism and to be underwhelmed by zero day old projects. It won't feel like a great oak tree on September 12th. It'll feel like a tiny acorn from which a mighty oak tree will emerge. Ready? Let's go. The amount of negative posting about concurrency over the last few days has actually been a lot less than I thought we'd eventually get when I first found out about concurrency a few months ago. But at the launch of Alonzo, we're going to encounter a whole different variety of criticism, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and probably a whole lot more than we've ever seen before. In what might turn out to be sort of a weird microcosm of what we could see on the 12th, this happened today. Cardano City has been a very high profile NFT mystery in the sense that nobody knew exactly what they were going to be putting on the market. We didn't realize exactly what they were selling. There had been some hints that there was something towards a metaverse, but there were also these indications that it was probably just a conventional art NFT project. And today we finally found out, yesterday as you watch this on Monday. It turns out that Cardano City was always exactly what we thought it was. It was an art NFT project that had some really cool art, but was basically a conventional art NFT project. It looks like there were like 50,000 of those apartment things and kind of strewn throughout those were 250 digital paintings, like the one we saw of Charles and the VR goggles. Um, it's, it's about what we thought it was. There was a little statement that we saw when the, uh, when the website suddenly went live earlier this week, you know, the vision statement basically said, Hey, we have this vision that maybe one day this turns into some kind of an immersive experience where you can like maybe walk around a city. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what it said, but it was something that, you know, made you believe, you know, maybe their vision is someday that kind of thing could happen. But what was actually sold today were a bunch of art NFTs, which is perfectly fine. I think it's perfectly fine for an art NFT project like this to have a vision that one day maybe their NFTs could be incorporated in some kind of an immersive world. They also had this legal disclaimer. The legal disclaimer basically said, hey, we have this vision, but the vision can change. We can deviate it from it at any time. Don't rely on anything we say about our vision for this project. We're going to comply with the laws of the Republic of Poland. I think this is perfectly fine. They created a bunch of cool art and there's a market for this cool art. As we could see from what happened today, a lot of buyers swarmed to this project. And I think they probably made a lot of purchases based on what we saw in pool PM. Here are a bunch of those apartment NFTs that were sold today. Some of those apartments had a whole bunch of Cardano related paraphernalia in them, sort of like the example we saw earlier. And some of them appeared to be quite a bit more empty. We also saw the requisite technical issues that you would see with an NFT art drop of this size on any blockchain. It turns out that taking 50,000 individual pieces of art and distributing them to a huge number of users over only a handful of hours is a pretty complicated thing. And it's kind of brand new. We're doing this on a blockchain and this is kind of a brand new thing. Blockchains, of course, now are a decade old, but EUTXO is kind of a brand new thing. It's pretty complicated and it's going to take some trial and error. And it's cool. These projects are figuring out how to do this because this will help us not just in these very early NFT art days, but figuring out the best way to distribute digital assets to a huge number of people like this. This is going to be helpful with all kinds of digital assets. I think we're all kind of in the same camp. We believe that a whole bunch of different digital assets that do a lot of different things in the real world and the digital world are going to be distributed on this Cardano blockchain. That, of course, is also what makes this a little bit of a microcosm of what we might see on the 12th. 
we're going to see a whole bunch of different projects, a bunch of different groups who all want to do a bunch of different stuff on an EUTXO blockchain with smart contracts. And nobody really knows how to do some of those things. People have ideas, they have different approaches, and we're going to see all that get hashed out after the 12th. People are going to launch their projects. Some of them are going to work great. Some of them are going to work terribly. We're going to figure out that some approaches are much better than others. We're going to figure out that some projects have a ton of work still ahead of them. And the user experience on their platforms is going to be terrible until they do that work. There's going to be this whole gamut of things going on, all these different experiences. And it's all going to be a bunch of trial and error because this is brand new. We're doing this thing for the first time. And there's going to be a lot of trial and error figuring out what works, uh, what kinds of smart contract ar architectures work, which ones are useful, what EUTXO smart contract systems are good for, what they're not good for. There's gonna be all that kind of stuff going on. As a quick aside, before we talk more about the 12th, allow me to offer up a humble and uninformed idea that is probably of dubious value. There's this other project within the Cardano ecosystem called Cornucopia's The Island. Paul did a great interview with the people behind Cornucopias. I strongly recommend you go over to Paul's channel and check that out. So Cornucopias, the island, according to their about page, is a blockchain-based play-to-earn, build-to-earn game. Players will have characters, land, other NFTs, and it is meant to be a fun and expanding metaverse. Based on the interview in this page, they're gonna have different zones, a cowboy zone, a farm zone, and a samurai zone. What if the people from Cardano City who have all this great art, all this great IP, they have characters kind of already built out, uh, they have these beautiful scenes and this beautiful uh, set of 50,000 apartments, which are basically equivalent to land. What if, the Cardano City people got together with the Cornucopias, the island people, and they added another zone, a Cardano City zone, a cyberpunk zone, in addition to this Wild West zone, this farm life zone, and this Age of the Samurai zone. And all those apartments became lands inside the cyberpunk zone, the, the Cardano City zone. And all of the all of the characters in the digital paintings. I guess there's, I guess there may be, there's only two, but Mika and Charles, but what if they developed a bunch more characters that could be characters in the cyberpunk zone? How would that be? I'm not saying that there's, this is even possible or that it's anything that Cornucopias or Cardano City would, would want or would work. I'm just saying, what if the two of them got together and talked about the possibility of this? I mean, that would give Cornucopias a huge number of built-in potential users who would already have a vested interest in one of these four zones. And it would give Cardano City the metaverse to inject their intellectual property into that their vision kind of already implies. I don't know if there's gonna be a Cardano Summit local meetup in Poland, but there is gonna be one in Amsterdam. Look at that, Cornucopias in Cardano City your names all start with C's. There's three words there. They all start with C's. Why don't you get all the C's together? <laughs> Why don't you meet up somewhere, watch the Cardano Summit together and hash out how we can create a fourth zone in Cornucopias that can be the Cardano City Zone. Just an idea. I'm probably not the first person who said it to either of you. Let's talk about the 12th. Over the last few days, we got a tiny taste of the firestorm of negativity and criticism that is coming for us in just a few days. I often make comparisons of Cardano to something like Tesla, something extremely disruptive where the incumbents really will have no idea of the disruptive power of the challenger until that disruption is at their doorstep. What happened in the last few days was almost as if a bunch of shareholders, people who held stock in like Ford and General Motors and, you know, what would have been at the time, Daimler, Chrysler, maybe it was already Fiat Chrysler, I don't know, but big, big uh, conventional auto manufacturers. If they had gone to a car show and seen a concept car of a Tesla Model S, 
they would have dismissed it outright and said, you know, the tolerances are terrible. The gaps in the panels are unacceptable. You know, the idea of a car that can travel so few miles without having to recharge for hours is unworkable. That's kind of what we got a taste of. Like, no surprise, Ethereum Maximalist saw the results of, you know, MinSwap just doing doing some experiments, some dry runs, doing some practice runs on on the test net. And of course they went nuts and made it sound like the worst thing in the entire world. This is what we'd expect. It's like shareholders of Ford looking at a Tesla concept car. But what's gonna happen on the 12th? They're gonna get to drive the car. It's gonna be way worse. They're going to see the, they're gonna experience the user experience on every single platform that Cardano projects are ready to put out there. The problem is these are going to be zero day old platforms. I mean, a lot of the famous, a lot of the the well-known projects that are gonna be launched in Cardano in the days following the 12th, the months following the 12th, maybe in all of 2021, those projects are all kind of homegrown projects. That's not to say that the developers aren't experienced or the people helming those projects aren't good leaders and experienced in other ways, but these are zero day old projects and they're kind of homegrown. They're not just like ports of Uniswap. You know, it's not the Uniswap people coming over to start a Cardano port of Uniswap. These are sort of homegrown projects in a lot of ways. And they're going to be zero day old projects on the 12th. They don't have these years of development and years of evolution of the user experience behind them. They're basically brand new, like infants trying to crawl around in the world. And they're going to be judged in comparison to projects that have been around for years in a lot of cases. The same people complaining about the results of the MinSwap experiments on the test net are actually going to use all these platforms in the days following the 12th. Okay, maybe they won't actually use them, but they're going to pretend like they just used them. They're going to pretend like they're dissatisfied users of Cardano. And a lot of the things they say are probably going to be based around, you know, some kernel of truth. These will be zero day old projects. They're going to have a lot of problems. They're not going to work well in a lot of cases. Some might, some might work great, but those aren't going to be the ones they're going to talk about. They're going to say they just used X project and there will have been, you know, some problems, some way in which it's inferior to its, you know, like years old counterparts on other blockchains. And they're going to talk about it a lot in those days following the 12th, in those months, probably following the 12th. And a lot of people who are genuine users of those projects are going to agree because these are brand new platforms. They're doing whatever they're do- going to be doing on a brand new type of blockchain, a uh, proof of stake EUTXO blockchain. This is brand new stuff and it's going to take some trial and error before we figure out the best way to do things. They say that the best time to plant a tree was like 20 years ago. And the second best time to plant a tree is now. And that's what we're going to be doing on the 12th. We're going to be planting an acorn. And there's going to be this huge crowd of people standing around. And they're all going to be complaining that the acorn provides no shade. (laughs) But we know, we know how much infrastructure has already been built around Cardano. How the framework for extremely fast growth and refinement has already been laid out. How the roadmap to build something that's never been seen in the crypto space before is already there. The tools to execute on that framework have already been built. So we're not going to be worried because we already know how extremely fast this acorn is going to grow. Talk to you tomorrow.